Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is 7-17-2019. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell for future updates. And I'm going to hand this straight over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, you know what? Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you, you had a great trading day. I know that we had some really great opportunities, and I hope that you were following us on some show, social media because... I really gave some real-time ideas today, especially with some option calls. And uh, I know that people for sure banked on those. So congrats if you did. So we're going to talk about, obviously, Boeing. And we're going to talk about Netflix, 10X, ZN, or ZN, and HEB. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about Boeing. So you know what? Boeing, as you guys know, we talked about this one even last night. And I said, you know, we're still bullish on the stock. Um, even though it's had, you know, that beaten down, you know, besides the fact with the max 737s, I mean, like what else is going on with this company? Um, I don't really think there's anything really bad going on. Um, they just had that bad luck, which, you know, obviously that was bad, you know, um, you know, people don't feel safe or comfortable. I mean, I personally wouldn't even want to be on one of those planes myself, but aside from that, um, you know, the, the stock is bullish right now. I'm, I'm bullish on it. Uh, we had a beautiful open today. I mean, uh, opened up at 362.75. Actually, basically where it kind of closed yesterday. And it actually went as low as 362 at one point today. But wow, what a move. It went to 369.75. And can I just give a shout out to Washboard Jim here? He babysat that for me in terms of giving me the play-by-plays with regards to resistance numbers. And every single one that this man gave me was bang on. So thank you so much to his help. And the other thing too, is I posted this on real time. So I have to say, I'm so excited. We actually gave an option calls on this one here and we gave the 50 cents per contract. Like that is not a lot of money, especially I'm telling you, if you have a small account, um, you would be banking. I'm going to, Jim, can I, can you show yep. the screenshot here? Sure can. I'm just sending you a, a screenshot right now. Uh, just show that right there. So I did alert here that BA calls were in play at 951. So shortly after the open, I don't want to always jump into a call or a put because I like to see how the market's behaving. And we got the 370 calls that expire Friday, paid 50 cents, alerted that on social media as well within like a minute from when I alerted our chat room. And as you can see, this the green chart below actually shows you how the open was 40 cents, but we bought them at 50. And it went as high at that time, uh, 137. However, I will tell you that these this particular option call for the 370 weekly on Boeing, uh, and there's people that are still holding, okay, went all the way to 222 high so it's closed off at uh, 216 today that was the last trade on that option so $50 going to $200 even if it went $50 to $100 you made a hundred percent I mean honestly I would be so excited like with a small account to know that I've doubled my money so there's such so many good opportunities with options so that's just an example there so, Jim, let's hear about the Boeing chart. All right. Well, this is how it kind of went out today. We called this out yesterday, and she ran up just beautifully up and down, pretty nice little up and down channels that kept running into the 200 EMA. And this is on a daily one minute. And then at the end of the day, it definitely sold off to what I would call, what I did call was a support level at 262.61. And she went ahead and leveled out again this morning, and right out of the gate, Miss Vegas started seeing the momentum pick up. We had the 9 and the 34 cross over the 200, and we had the little spread from the 9 and the 34 that opened it up. And then she went hit a resistance level up right around the 368.19, and that's right now where the 200 SMA is at close. And that's right where we poked back to. So that's going to be kind of a new support or maybe a new resistance for this stock right now at 368.19. Yep, now I've got to draw that line in there and put a little red line on there. Means we're talking about just right here. I'm going to adjust it right about there. 368.17. 
I'm going to turn that red real fast. Come on, Jimbo. So we got a pullback support on this thing, no lower than 366.44. We did consolidate it once it did pull back and hit that 200 SMA. And I told Miss Vegas, no threat. It's hugging up against this 200 EMA right here. If I said SMA, that was a false statement. EMA. And then once it, it finally squeezed out, that 9 crossed over that 34. And once it did that, it started breaking out again. And at the end of the day, it just kept going bullish. It kept falling at 34 and respecting that 9 until the end of the day, which we had a close here at 369.75. So this is going to be our play of the day today. It's going to be Boeing. Bounce off this low support down here at 362.61 all the way to 369.75. And great call, Miss Vegas. Like I said now, the low support on this thing is going to be 366.64 if it decides to pull back or I'll be bouncing it off that 200 EMA for a low support come tomorrow. And that's BA. And the next one we're going to talk about, and good call, Miss Vegas. And I'm it's so exciting to watch you listen to you call it and the people in the room enjoy the bounce. Next one's going to be an after-hour sale, and that's called Netflix. Oh, my gosh. So Netflix, unfortunately, missed on subscribers in Q2 as competition does loom. As you guys know, I mean, they did pass 150 million subscribers, um, but they did miss the forecast for new memberships. I mean, the company did add 2.7 million new people in the second quarter of 2019. However, that is just over half of the 5 million ones that the analysts were expecting. So analysts were expecting that they'd sign up 5 million new customers. And instead, they only signed up 2.7. They actually have 151.5 million customers globally. And they said that they do expect to add another 7 million in the next quarter. But nobody cares about that. They want to know, like, what have you done this past quarter? Um, so, you know, obviously, there's a lot of uh, big tech, big media, deep pockets. We, we told you before, um, some are taking licensed shows. I mean, don't forget, the big threat to Netflix right now is Disney. I mean, Disney's going to debut Disney Plus come November, uh, November the 12th to be exact. And that's coming out in North America. It's going to have a lot of popular content from the Marvel Studios. Uh, they actually, you know, they're going to be doing, um, they're going to do an original Star Wars. They're going to have a new series called The Mandalorian. So Disney Plus is definitely alluring a lot of people. Um, and also, um, it's probably not necessarily the price people are saying, but really the content they're going to have, they're going to be paying $6.99 a month for the Disney Plus, which, by the way, is half the price of what Netflix does charge. Um, they also feel that Disney uh, service could bring in 60 to 90 million subscribers by the end of 2024. So you know what? Also, don't forget, Warner Media also announced this month that its new streaming service, HBO Max, is going to probably hit the market with 10,000 hours of content that is going to be have tons of shows. Um, HBO Max will be the only place to stream shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, uh, Pretty Little Liars, obviously the show Friends. We still don't know what this is going to cost. But again, these are all different companies that are competing now with Netflix. I mean, Netflix is still ahead of the game with the subscriber base they have. They are definitely home to many original shows. Uh, there's many shows I like that are only on Netflix at the moment. Uh, and, and we'll just have to see. But, you know, again, um, as a result of them missing the subscriber base, the stock has pulled back. So I'm going to let Jim talk about that because, you know what, Netflix is still a good company. Um, it's currently trading right now at 316.29. I mean, the shorts are seriously all over this. And let's hear Jim. I want to hear what you think about Netflix. Yeah, well, I jumped in it after hours, maybe a little bit too soon, I think. But I'm going to pull up the chart right now. And I did call a support down here at, what was that again, 215.40. And let me bring this up to a year's chart. You can see what I'm talking about. Right down here at 215.40. I said it could go down to that. And I jumped in it at 223. So let me... Um, pull up a year this is the year's chart 
As Miss, I'm listening to Miss Vegas talk here, I'm starting to think, yeah, I did make a big mistake. But I have, we have a year low down here at 231.23. That's a complete year low. And I was looking at this dip we had right here at 215.40, and I figured that maybe it can go down to there too. And I jumped in here at 223, right about in here, right after hours, a little bit above that. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to definitely watch this thing tomorrow. I'm almost baiting on if I want to get out now and just cut my losses short before I'm not going to, I didn't buy that many shares. But let me pull up the 20 day or the 20 day ain't going to tell me anything. It's going to be all this here in the year's chart. So my first support down here was right at 315.40 and I think it can pull back down here to 301.26. I do see kind of a little flat line level right there, so I'm going to call this my probably my second support. I want to draw that in red so I can remember that if it pulls back to that there 301.26. Then my third support is going to be right around here, right around the, let me draw one right in here, right at 293.09. So those are going to be the two numbers I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. And I'm going to adjust that to a red so I can remember that when I look at it in the morning. But I thought this thing would bounce right back up to the 340 area. Right around in here where this little red line is right here. Back to the 200. Right here right around the 336, 340 area. So we'll just have to watch and see what happens in the morning. But I do have two low supports. 293.09 and 301.26. And we did hit that 315.14. And I'm going to pull this up to the daily one minute. And you can see with that 322 right there is about where I got in this trade at. As it pulled back, I said, man, this is incredible. This is an opportunity. And then she went ahead and touched down to that 315.40. If I just had a little more patience. But anyway, if I'd have seen that going up, I would have jumped in it anyway and tried to run it on up. But she did pull back. So that's going to be your first support at 315.40. And we're going to try to bring this back up to this resistance level of 337 to 342 is going to be my guess. We do have to break this first resistance at 325.56. But after listening to a little bit what Miss Vegas just said, it kind of gives me a little more negative sentiment. And that's Netflix. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be TENX. Okay, so TENX, um, you know, this is uh, Tenax Therapeutics. Uh, they're very involved in treating conditions um, for different kinds of conditions. Uh, specifically, they have quite a few things in the pipeline. They have one here for the Levosamindin, which is a um, therapeutic treatment for people with cardiac contractility. And um, they, that is currently in the pipeline and uh, waiting, I guess, to see what happens with that. Um, the reason I like this stock, actually, I do want to give a shout out to one of my followers on StockTwits. And, uh, he actually brought this stock to my attention and I saw the chart and I said, oh my gosh, this has a nice pocket pivot. And I know I always talk about pocket pivots. So thank you so much to Mr. RKS2017. Um, he actually alerted me on this particular uh, stock, uh, not for a day trade, but really more for a sewing trade idea. And when I checked it out, I really liked it. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, Jim, maybe you can talk about this lovely chart because I really like the setup here. All right, I sure will. TENX. We're going to pull up the yearly chart first. I did have three different years of trend lines on this. So this is how long I've been watching this stock for about three years. And we did have a little high right here where it bounced up last this year to right around the 224 area. It's going to be like a little resistance target to get to at 224. And I see another one. We did have a big spike up here, big fat finger right there. And she sold off pretty hard on that. So probably did get some news then. But we have a year high of 694 and a year low of 103. And then she bounced up and found an equilibrium right here around the 224 area. Looked like it had some pretty good little time right there for about a month and a half. And then it's pulled back ever since. 
with a low right around the 2122 area. So I'm going to draw that trend line in there. We're going to pull up the 20 day now and I'm going to see if I can find a couple more little spots in here. Looks like I've done a pretty well job. I missed that 122 a little bit so I'm going to erase that remove that right there and I'm going to bring it up to right about 124. So that's going to be the low, 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 low support. Then we've got another support right in here at the 140 area. I'm going to draw that in there. And the resistance we got a break is going to be this 159. Right now after it did close at 155 and that's where we sit right now after hours at 155. Pullback support it's going to be in this little channel right in here, right around the 149 for your first support. Your second one's going to be right around the 145 with a 140, between a 135 and a 140 low, low support. Resistances we got to break are going to be three of them. It's going to be the 159, the 162, and we bust past that 168, and we're going to run her up to 173. And remember, I mentioned that, two, if I remember, 224 is what I said. Yeah, 186, 224 is going to be your long resistance on this. And that's going to be TENX. Pullback support, again, I'm going to give it one more time. It's going to be around here, the 149 area. 145 to 140 is going to be your low support. 140, I hate to see it go any lower than that. And I want to break the resistance of 168 to bring it to 224, TENX. And then... This is time to sing ZN. ZN as in Miss Vegas would say, Z as in Z. That's right. And you know what? Beautiful Zion oil and gas. They and they were some news today. You know, this is a really bottom play too on this penny oil stock. I mean, this company they have a location in Dallas, Texas, by the way, and also in uh, Caesarea, Israel. And I love Israeli tickers. And uh, you know, this company you know, they actually have a binding agreement. And uh, what they did is they actually have, like they've been zoning for like a, what they call a 3D seismic land owner permit service. And uh, apparently they finally have a contractor, a signed agreement with uh, contractors as of July 1st. So they've been able to formalize and scope the performance of the work that's going to be done that they've been apparently doing the uh, permitting process several weeks ago, but they finally got the contractor agreement signed off. Um, so that's actually good. Um, what they're going to be doing is um, it's a very time intensive, but very important stage of the project because it creates a survey of the program area, which is a prerequisite for mobilization for this acquisition of this uh, systemic uh, contractor and also um, from what I was reading here you know they're going to be working with consultants they're using the consultants of the Ministry of Transportation and Communication to also make sure they get the permits for this important seismic source and equipment also from Europe so this is a huge project um, they're really happy about the progress they've made and this is a vital step towards their exploration plans as stated by the vice president, uh, Jeff Moskowitz. So, Jim, over to you because you know what I like. I like ZN. It's pulled back. I mean, you know, they have currently ninety nine thousand, just so you know, of acreage in uh, Megiddo, just real. So, right in Israel. So, um, let's see them. Let's see if they can find some oil here. But uh, looks like they're they're making some progress. So, what do we see about this chart here? Yeah, we were watching this stock when it was up around five dollars and playing it. And she's pulled all the way back here to thirty-two twenty on a twenty-day chart. I'm gonna pull up the yearly first. See, we were up here at three forty-three just last year. I've got three years of trend lines on this stock, and I'm gonna pull up the three year just to show you. Well, that ain't three year. That's three months. There we go. So we were up here around 690, and I was scalping this thing back in this area here, right around the four up to the five buck area, and that was back in 2017. Then we got 2018 trend lines where I scalped it a little bit, and then I've been scalping it here in 2019. Well, she had a, a three-year low down here at 3250, is what I'm calling for a low support. 
I'm going to pull up the 20-day now. I'm going to get a good look at the 20-day. I do believe, and I did call this out, I said we were going to go up to maybe 48 today. We didn't make that mark. We did make it to 44. It also had a nice little run last week all the way up to 54.88. So I do believe personally that this can pull back again no lower than I, I don't see it going to 32.50. If it does, that's going to be a very strong buy. Very strong. Let me repeat that. But right now, 35.42 is going to be... Let me adjust one more little support level here. We'll get this right. Right around 34.69 is going to be your support level. Anything below that is going to be a strong buy. 34.69, the next support is going to be right here around 36.02. Right now we're standing, we closed at 37 with a resistance level of 38. And we just stop this video at any time and you can see all these little channels I have for resistance levels. But I do believe we're going to get back to the 47.31 to 48 right here, about 47.95. 47.31 to 47.95, anything past that's going to be a gift. And I'm going to repeat that, a gift. People will be selling it once it hits that 54.88. But right now, you're in a target zone to buy this thing. If it dips to 34.69, that's going to be your first entry. Or you could see how the momentum carries it tomorrow. And that's going to be ZN. And there was something else I read about this, but I can't think of it right offhand. Uh, oh, yeah, they got, they got an extension, wasn't it? They had uh, extension for what? I think that was, uh, yeah, for ZN. Yeah. You're talking about the extension for the, uh, to not be delisted? Yes. Yeah, yeah, they've, yeah. they've submitted their plan. Yeah. So they have the extension for the next six months, 180 yeah. days. So we got to break. And so hopefully we'll get the stock back up again. Yeah, if we can break this resistance of 42, we're going to see that 48. Anything past that's going to be a gift. And that's going to be ZN. And then we got one more we're going to do, the final one, and that's HEB. Yeah, so, you know, I got to say, I'm impressed with HEB's website. I mean, uh, you know, they did, um, this is for Hemispherics Biopharma, so they call it HEB. Scanner says Hebrew when it comes on the scanner. I'm like, what she's saying? Um, but they did mention, you know, this company is very involved. I mean, they don't forget, they had a reverse stock split May 31st, right? Yep. They did a reverse stock split, which they announced um, the, the shareholders had approved it. And what did they do? I think which took a, they did a one for 44, okay, to achieve a value of about $5 a share. And that was effective June 11. So, I mean, that, that, that has taken place. Um, they also had some clinical updates. They did announce that they also had their first patients treated in a phase two ovarian cancer trial. Um, and also, they also had some clinical updates on one of their immuno oncology programs. So, and they also have, uh, by the way, uh, their CFO, Adam Pascal, has retired. So uh, he's stepping down. Um, he's going to actually still be with the company, though, just so you know, as a consultant, which I do like that. Um, he will be there with them. And uh, he'll be retiring basically by September 15th so that he could help them complete their 10Q for the period ending June 30th. Um, and so... We'll see uh, who they're going to groom for a replacement uh, because he's, you know, he's done a good job, but at least he's going to be on as a consultant. Uh, so that's great. You know what? He wants to retire. So I don't blame him for wanting to just be a consultant. Um, anyhow, going back to this uh, stock here. So we did see this pop um, on HEB and, uh, you know, it's had, it's ran in the past. And, uh, you know, someone was mentioning something about Ebola, and this is why the stock is popping. But again, this is like another, like, typical bottom play right now. And uh, I'm going to let Jim talk about what he sees on the chart, but definitely keep this on watch. Yeah, this just had a reverse stock split, and that's why the price is up right now. Uh, Maxim Group has a price target of $8 on this trade right now, so it's also moved into the low float category. This is an HEB on a yearly chart. It's going to be different because of the split, but these are going to be the little targets. It did have a high on that split of 1481, counted already in, and I do have some resistance levels that I have right here. But mostly for the year, it's been in the red, so our low support's going to be right around 362, 
I don't see that coming, not at all. But if it does, that's going to be a strong buy. So let's pull up the 20-day chart. And I'm going to draw a couple trend lines on this where I think it can go to. We've got that 461. Then I've got another support level right here, right around oh, 439. This is 15 years of studying trend lines that I'm showing you right now. And I've got another little resistance right here at 416 with a low support of right around 391 to 362 that we spoke of earlier. So I'm going to pull up the daily now. Let me see if I can find one more in here. Yeah, right there at four bucks. We're going to pull up the daily one minute. The daily three minute. See what I missed? There's one right there at 428 bring it to the one minute and I could raise that up to a mountain there of 430 so this is what we're looking at we're looking at a third support down here right around the 391 anything below that's going to be a strong buy we got four dollars to be a solid support right now we're sitting at 407 and I could draw me a little trend line in there it looks pretty good right there actually then we've got resistances that we've got to take this to so we're sitting here after hours at 407. That's what it closed at. Your first resistance is going to be in this little channel chamber right here between 416 and 419. That's going to be your second support or maybe your first resistance, I mean. Your second resistance is going to be up here in the 428 to 430 area. And resistance, we got a break. And anything past that is going to be a gift from 439 to 440 so that's just a penny little pinch right there talk about penny pinchers low support 391 first support right at four bucks we're sitting at a pivot point right here in this channel at 407 first resistance 416 to 419 second one from 428 to 430 with a final gift of 439 to 440 anything past that's going to be a gift there will probably be some selling going on out there at that 439. And that's going to be HEB, and I do like this trade, and I also like ZN, too. I think the momentum will start picking up on ZN. So this is the aftermarket report, and I think Miss Vegas really did well today with that BA call. That was very impressive. And that's, you know, I'm just very pleased that I have her by my side giving out these, these alerts. She's been a good good trainer for me. I mean, I know a lot, but she's taught me a lot more. Anything else you'd like to say, Miss Vegas? No, I just want to say thank you to you for your help and also uh, great shout outs to uh, Stock Authority. It's been great uh, alerting me on HEB today and also helping me with posting news on ZN. And uh, Rich has been great calling out some great options. I mean, just the team, like I just what I love about the group is just the teamwork involved. So um, again, uh, thank you to so many great, great traders out there and so happy to have met them. Uh, the other thing too is Jim and I are going to work on uh, educational videos. So I'll be doing another one coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Probably have a couple of them on the weekend. Uh, again, they're going to be like short 10, 15 minute videos. I think I'm going to probably do one on, you know, what I look for when I take an option trade and, you know, what kind of chart I look at. So it helps you. Uh, also, because you should be looking at the charts, like, you know, when you see an option idea, um, not just take it, like you should sometimes look at the chart, see if it meets your criteria, because there are so many things going on out there. And also, how do you stay in a trade? Because you can get shaken out. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I will talk about how I try to stay in a trade and how I actually stay in one and what makes me stay in one. Okay, so... I will talk about that in our upcoming video, which should help some of you obviously stay in your trades longer. Um, and one of them has to do with charts that Jim does and the supports and resistance he provides. So I will talk about that. So thank you so much, everyone. You have an amazing night and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. So we're almost through the week. Looking forward to it. Have a great night. Yeah. If you are subscribed and you do want to look up our, 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 YouTube channel here. This is the lesson she was talking about. The last one I gave is the EMA chart lesson. Exponential moving average, the 9, the 34, and the 200. And the next one I'm going to put out is going to be about the TTM squeeze using along with the 9, the 34, and the 200. So 
This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's July 17th, 2019, and we definitely do one thing, and that's we love stocks. And thank you very much.